Android Dialogues, where we have bite-sized conversations with people in the Android community. I'm Huynh Det Dao, and I'm speaking with... Chris Guzman. And we're currently in Chicago for Chicago Roboto, <laughs> where Chris and I are both speaking. Mm -hmm. Chris, where are you based, and how did you get started in Android? So I'm based in Baltimore, Maryland. Woo! Uh, yeah, yeah. Baltimore is really cool. I'm actually moving to New Orleans, but I still oh, love Baltimore. Baltimore Maryland really will cool. miss you. Maryland. Yeah. Well, I'm actually from Annapolis, but Maryland, like, I love, look, look at this. this yeah, is like, isn't this a cool shirt? This is awesome. Yeah, this my is friend like, made it. Really? Yeah, totally. Let me know if you want one afterwards. Yes. You're on camera. <laughs> okay, See, Chris yeah. has to get me a shirt. Okay, sorry. So you're based in Baltimore. Yeah, I'm based in Baltimore and I work at Nexmo. Um, so I, I work remotely. Uh, and at Nexmo, I'm a developer advocate. So I work on our Android uh, client libraries and I do some Ruby as well. Uh, but the way I got into Android was actually I was a Rails developer. I did one of those boot camp kind of things. Oh, cool. Uh, and so I learned Rails and I was at this startup called Order Up. And we had an Android app that was made by contractors, but we wanted to bring it in-house. Mm -hmm. And so there was only about 10 developers and only two of them had Android phones. And it was myself and the CTO. And so the CTO was like, how do you feel about learning Android? And I was like, let's do it. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, so I learned a little bit on my own and then we brought in a senior developer. His name's Cody, he's my mentor now, even though I've left order up, like he's, oh, we're still in good contact. Um, so that's kind of how I learned Android and I took my knowledge with me when I went to uh, Nexmo. So. Awesome, and your talk this week is on, is on a really cool subject and that is? WebSocket. All right, so for the uninitiated or the just slightly unfamiliar, what are WebSockets? WebSockets are a bi-directional communication protocol between a server and a client, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think a really good way to uh, think about this in your mind is think about Slack, right? Slack is an app that uses WebSockets um, to send messages back and forth to a server and a client. Um, and it's different than like HTTP right. uh, because you're with HTTP, you're sending gets or posts, right? And then you're basically sending uh, one request and then the server is immediately responding with your request. But with WebSockets, you have a constant connection open. And the, the great thing about WebSockets is now the server can start pushing events onto you. Um, and so that's really cool. So that's how you get like your notifications when somebody mentions your name in, in, in Slack, you know, that's how um, you're able to have this constant communication. Um, in terms of like Android development, how easy it is to, how easy is it to integrate WebSockets? It's super easy. Yeah. So WebSockets aren't really new, right? Like they've right, been around right. for a while and mm -hmm. like, um, and so like, that's uh, one of the things I talk about in this talk. Like there's a lot of libraries out there to, to deal with, with WebSockets. Um, so one of the ones I'm going to talk about in my talk is OKHTTP, okay, which we might all know and love, you know, it powers retrofit and all that. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> like, well, I think I've heard I think of I'm that one. <laughs> I think I've heard of that one. But yeah, so it added WebSocket report uh, support natively. Previously, nice. it was like a module. Uh, but before that, there's Android Async, uh, Java WebSockets. There's like all these things out there that have existed for a while. But just using OKHTTP okay, is like super simple to um, to uh, hook up to and, and to use. And if you're an Android developer that just wants to test out WebSockets, um, there's this service, uh, echo.websocket.org, and it just sends out like a, a, you know, a WebSocket echo where you can send something and it sends it back to you. So you don't even need a server like a WebSocket server to mess around with WebSockets. You can mm -hmm. just use this this uh, website. Are the requests that you make very different? Like, do you have to kind of like uh, structure your code very different if you wanted to make an HTTP request? HTTP, how many T's did I put in that? Oh, one? I hate saying HTTP so HTTP. all the time. HTTP. Yeah, exactly. Um, are, is, it, are, is like the mechanism so different in, yeah, in the so code? Yeah, so with... HTTP requests, you're usually sending back JSON back and forth, right? Like as right. developers, that's usually what we're sending. Mm -hmm. uh, with WebSockets, uh, there's really two um, two kind of ways that you can send and receive messages. One is you can send strings. Um, and that's really simple and easy, right? If you're going to make a messaging client, just you're sending back and forth a string. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other one is you can send binary data. Um, so if you wanted to send media like audio, video, images, something like that, you can send all of that. Uh, in like a, an array of primitive bytes back and forth. But what I would suggest and um, what I would suggest some developers to do is kind of take JSON that you might send and wrap it in a string and mm -hmm. send it back and forth and then decode it on the other side. Oh, interesting. Um, because that, that way you can kind of still use the, the like, um, the methods that you usually use to like send stuff back and forth. And especially when uh, we're talking about sending media back and forth, mm -hmm. um, sometimes you might want to not decode and encode media on your own when you send it back and forth. So if you wrap it in a string and you wrap J JSON in a string, you can just pass a URL to it. Right. And then you can pass an image URL to like something like 
Picasso or Glide or something like that. And then mm -hmm. they can take care of that that way. So, I mean, it seems like WebSockets are pretty awesome just because, again, like you said, it's an open, it's kind of like an open channel between the client and the server as opposed to kind of like a kind of a back and forth messaging. Yeah. Are there any disadvantages to using WebSockets? Yeah, totally. So if you're going to have like a long, persistent WebSocket connection, uh, as an Android developer, one, you might be negatively affected by those, right? Yeah, exactly, right? And so like, you know, we all were prepared for this when Doze came out. Mm -hmm. uh, but one of the things I kind of suggest is that like, if you're ha if you're at risk to have your WebSocket connection cut by Doze, then you might want to rethink how you're using WebSockets, right? Mm -hmm. um, especially when it comes to um, having a persistent notification. Like, so let's think about Slack, right? Mm -hmm. When you have Slack Slack open in the foreground, uh, you are having a WebSocket connection open. You're sending stuff back and forth, and when you close Slack, it probably is closing that WebSocket thing, mm -hmm. and it's falling back to push notifications or something like that. Mm -hmm. So as an app developer, that's what you can do, uh, and and. Also with WebSockets, uh, just in general, having that connection open, you might, you know, be negatively affecting your user's battery. Uh, but you know, that's something you kind of have to deal with. Like mm -hmm. you're adding an extra feature onto them. Mm -hmm. So it's not like a panacea. Like you probably will still like be making HTTP yeah. requests for certain things. Totally. You might still relying on push notification services yeah. for other things. But then you know, but for maybe foregroundy kind of type stuff, it'd be kind yeah. of an awesome. And if like anybody's ever heard of Socket IO, that's kind of what they do. Like mm -hmm. Socket IO is this framework uh, that you can implement on the server and the client. And Socket IO is kind of just like this mix of all these network communications, right? Like, so they use WebSockets, but if that connection isn't uh, possible, then they'll fall back to HTTP. And then if you're using JavaScript, they even uh, fall back to Flash if you have Flash installed on your thing, <laughs> which as Android developers, we don't have to worry about that, you know, which is really awesome. Uh, so yeah, like as, as a developer, you can also do that if you want. You can fall back to um, sending uh, HTTP requests. You can uh, fall back to that. Another thing to worry about with uh, WebSockets is um, a lot of these libraries don't have a concept of like a queue of messages to send. Mm -hmm. So you as a developer are going to have to implement that logic on your Ooh. own, right? So like you might have a thing that's um, that you want to send, but then if the server for some reason just cuts off that 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 WebSocket connection, you don't know if the server has received it or not. Mm -hmm. um, so you might, or a user might, uh, you know, do some uh, app switching really quick. Like they might send a message and they think that it's sent, but they switched over to the email to check mm -hmm. it out. Mm -hmm. So you might want to have some logic that's checking like every message when it, if it's sent successfully, you know, like saving that back to the queue. That way, if they come back to the app, then you can start sending that, sending that off. Oh, awesome. So do you have any other kind of like, because you, again, you mentioned Slack. It's always, it's, it always seems like chat's always like kind of a good example for yeah, kind totally. of networking. But do you kind of have any other hints that maybe like certain situations or certain kind of, um, I guess, um, use cases? Use cases. Thank you yeah, very totally. much. <laughs> well, I mean, like, this is all I've been thinking about for the past week. Like, yeah, what, what are some good use cases that hmm. might, that might, a person might want to consider WebSockets for? Well, I can think of two companies that use WebSockets. Uh, one would be Nexmo, the company I work for. Um, so next, yeah, exactly. Right? <laughs> Uh, so Nextmo has like an API for sending, receiving uh, phone calls and text messages. And one of the things that you can do is you can connect a phone call to a WebSocket. Um, so like one of the things I've been messing around with is connecting a phone call to uh, IBM Watson server and then doing um, speech to text transcript, nice, which that's yeah. really cool. Uh, but then another company, you may have heard of it, it's called Trello. Uh, Trello uses WebSockets. Uh, <laughs> uh, Might have heard of this. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? But like, so like our team uses Trello and we have like five boards and like if right. somebody makes a change to the board, both they see it and I see it at the same time. And that's a really good use case, right? So like everybody's seeing the same up-to-date information. Like Google Docs is it. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if they use WebSockets. They might just use like some low-level TCP but, but that kind of thing. idea of doing like yeah. kind of like a um, kind of, um, sorry, like kind of like coordination. Yeah, like, totally. Like everyone sees clients. the same information all at the same time. Yeah. That's really cool. And I think, I think it's definitely like, especially like as we're, our mobile apps are kind of getting more complicated and we're trying to do these things with like kind of like co-work, like kind of working together and like kind of coordination of data and stuff totally. like that. It'd be an awesome thing to try WebSockets for. Yeah. So if people wanted to find you on the, on the internet, how can they do that? Uh, you probably find me on Twitter. Um, you shouldn't follow my blog because I have like three blogs and I don't know which one to update. Uh, but you can follow me on Twitter. I'm at speak to Chris. Uh, so that's two with like the actual letters, not like the number. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Chris. Thank you. And thank you all. And we'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Cool. Thanks hey, so much. That was that's awesome. awesome. Bye. So I like it. Hit the mic. No, I hit the mic all the time. Yeah.